Welcome to Cardiff University. Welcome to the Cardiff School of Engineering. Uh, what this should be, should be the gathering of the year one in civil engineering, architectural engineering, and civil and environmental engineering. I, th that's generally, it generally works because you're the first people that uh, uh, enrolled and if you were in one of the other degree programs, uh, you should be enrolling now and not in this particular session. Okay. Um, the, uh, what, sorry, who I am, I'm Alan Kwan. I am the head of civil engineering here. Normally, this would be uh, delivered to you by the head of year one, the year one tutor, Dr. Bokuman Evans, but I am standing in for her today. Um, so, what I'm trying to do here is just to provide you with a brief introduction, just enough to get you going so that you know uh, where things are and where not to miss things. Uh, I'm, there's probably more than um, enough on these slides as it, as it is, and even then I'm not telling you everything, I'm only giving you the briefest of introduction. Uh, so I understand it would take time for you to adjust, um, and it would take time to absorb lots of uh, new ways, new things, and a lot of the induction this week is so that you uh, familiarize yourself with the procedures, but probably also to, fam to get yourself thinking in a university student mode. And studying as a university student, I assure you, is different to how... Uh, you might have studied in other types of education. So there is a, a fair amount to get in before you actually start your first lecture on Monday. Uh, and there are actually some timetable change, but don't worry, you just follow the, the timetable, turn up at the right place, and things will happen. Okay? So um, there is quite a lot to get uh, to understand. Um, and this introduction, um, even if it's uh, too much, don't worry, uh, I am recording it, and if I have the right sort of ability, um, it will be on YouTube, so, so that you can download it later. To, uh, at least it might be helpful in the first week or so to work out where things are. Um, the thing to notice, um, so... 12 o'clock now, we have this session. Uh, towards the end, the academic staff that are around will come. So some of you will have your, year tu your personal tutors uh, here. Some of the academic staff are away. Um, this is still enrollment week. We don't come back really in full until next week. So you may find that uh, yeah, they're not here, but you will be looked after by somebody for today. Then, that's one o'clock, we go over and have lunch. Um, two o'clock, you do have a meeting back, no, not back here. Two o'clock, it's um, uh, the main lecture theatre in the south building. Um, I'll, where we will be for lunch, it will be on the same level, so you shouldn't get lost. Um, and that meeting there will be on the issue of unfair practice or how to avoid unfair practice rather than how do you gain advantage from it. Uh, the, an important session uh, is 10.30 tomorrow morning in this room. Uh, so this room is called the Prince Philip Lecture Theatre, shortened with PPLT. Uh, it's also North 407 because we're in the North Building on the fourth floor and this is room seven in, uh, uh, on, in, on this floor. So this is the room that you should get familiar with because this is the room where most of your lectures will be. Um, I've deliberately asked for this room for ACE Year 1 because it's a fairly big, roomy, 
uh, airy room. And it doesn't get too stuffy. Um, so that when you are there for your fifth lecture of the day, you are still bright and fresh. Um, that's the idea. Okay? That was a joke. <laughs> Although you probably will have two or, uh, at least three lectures a day, maybe four. Um, so you, you will just have to get used to the engineering timetable, which is somewhat different from some of the other courses that your friends in the halls will, will have. So tomorrow morning, 10.30, you have the health and safety lecture in here. That is a mandatory lecture. Uh, engineering, do come in, find a seat, um, shuffle along, squeeze up and get friendly with someone. The uh, engineering department, of course, has, is a potentially dangerous place. There are equipment uh, dotted about, many of which are, to put it mildly, killer machines. Uh, if they don't kill you, they'll certainly chop your arm off. Um, so it's a dangerous place. And we want you to be safe in the engineering department. And so we do make it compulsory that you must attend the health and safety lecture. And if you don't, there will be another one that you could attend. But if you don't go to them eventually um, in two, three weeks' time and you still haven't gone, we will deregister you. That will kick you out. Is that serious? It's the only lecture in the, the year where we make it absolutely compulsory. It's a legal obligation that you, you are familiar with the safety of this building. While we're here, um, seeing that you will use this room a lot, uh, there will only be one practice fire alarm in the year. Um, if you, and if it, that hopefully will be the first fire alarm and the only one you will hear. Um, but it, it may not be uh, a practice. It may be for real. And you notice you actually came up um, four flights of stairs. So uh, we are perched on top of the roof here. And if there is a fire underneath us, uh, and it's not too big, then we will just feel gently warmed. Um, <laughs> but if it is a serious issue, then may I point out to you, the escape route is not via the windows. Uh, it's a long way down. Uh, the, what should happen in the case of a fire alarm, in fact, is uh, we go out, the front half of the room should go out through these two fire doors, you then actually go onto the roof, and then onto the roof there's a, a hatch on the other side where we can go down through some stairs, uh, normal stairs. Um, and those people at the back end, if uh, the fire isn't on the staircase, then you, and there's no smoke coming up the stairwell, then escape is via that route. Okay? As I said, we will have a practice. Chances are you'll be in this room when that happens because most of your lectures are here uh, and we will get to use, well, break the locks on these fire door once for, for practice and get out that way. Okay? Right, those are pretty much the important things that I need to, to, to get across. The rest, I will, is, a lot of it is information, so sorry, uh, it is informational, but Sooner or later, you will need to know these things. And since I am recording it, don't bother taking notes. Uh, somehow, I'll tell you how to find it on uh, YouTube when I get it there. And then you can um, play it back at any time you want. Okay? All right, let me go through. Um, I did print out my notes, but I didn't bring them. So I'm working on this as I go. So let me tell you how the structure of the school is. So um, you are in ACE, which is not a bad thing to be in, um, architectural, civil and environmental. And the other de degree programs, the electricals, mechanical, medical, they are in the other two sections of the school. So you are in one third of the school. 
Okay, so civil engineering, we run both the undergraduate and the uh, MSE programs. So they're called the, the, the three disciplines, and in the ACE discipline, they, you have uh, the various years, so year one, two, three, and therefore MNG, year four, and then you have the uh, MSC. Uh, so this is who I am, Alan Kwan Bokuman. Dr. Bettina Bokuman Evans is your year one tutor. And when you get to year two, then you'll get to know who the year two tutor uh, is, but that, that's the person you need to know um, for year one. Um, apart from uh, Dr. Bokuman Evans, you will have your own personal tutor, and that is the person that is, uh, whose name is on the yellow booklet. So you were assigned a personal tutor, um, and we will meet in groups of about five, uh, typically weekly, usually Monday 10 o'clock, but you may find your own tutor group will meet at some other time in the week. Uh, but in the first semester, we aim to meet weekly with the personal tutor, just to make sure that you are settling in okay. All right. So uh, your personal tutor should be the person that you get to know uh, most uh, as you progress, not just in year one, but through your degree program. So um, Dr. Bo uh, Bachman Evans uh, is, a, you will find out on it, her, a, Room number in, is in the booklet anyway, West 2.37. Um, you'll soon get to work out how the, the rooms are numbered in this place. Uh, mostly it follows the, the compass. So we are in the north building. South is that way. So south building is where we were in the uh, enrollment. So you then get the, the second letter or number is ground or zero, and then one, two, three, four, that tells you the different levels. Okay. So West 237 is actually West Building. So between South and North, we have West on the second floor, room 37. And that's how the room numbers work. Okay. Something to put in the mix there, you, we do have the East Building, but in between east and west, we have the central building. So if you see C, that's central. And then, um, peculiarly, there's a T building as well, which is Trevithic, which is further north of north. Okay, so north is this building, but further north, we actually have the Trevithic building, where uh, you have things like the computer rooms, the uh, canteen, the library, so the central facilities are over there. We, say, we share this site. Uh, this is the uh, Newport Road side. Uh, we share it with computer science and physics. So not everyone you see in and around here will be an engineer. Um, we will have physicists mainly in this bit of the building, computer science sort of somewhere over there at the top. Um, don't see them very much. Um, they're probably largely working from home uh, online or something like that. Um, but we, we do share these buildings with two other schools. So, oh yeah, there we are. Um, so that's the general layout of the place. Okay, so we are in the north building right at the top, south, there's west, central, and then the east building over there, and then Trevithic. Um, Um, and West 2.37 is just the um, Dr. Bockelman Evans room. Right. I'll quickly run through this. Um, okay, these are her roles, but you don't need to know too much about the details. Um, what you need. Uh, is this. If you have an issue, um, it could be academic or it could be academically related issue. So uh, it could be that um, you have a health problem, um, you've broken your leg. 
Um, if you break your leg, do, do let us know. Or anything like that. Okay? It's not just leg. Anything like that. Because, for two reasons. One, um, if you broke your hand, um, it may impair your learning. Uh, and if you break it seriously, you might not be able to write for three weeks, and therefore you're not submitting lab reports, or you're not doing some work, or, or something like that for three weeks. We need to know, because if you're not submitting and your grades go down, uh, then we need to know if there is a good and valid reason why you're not performing to what you should be. Uh, the exam board can take these things into account, but only if you let us know. So if you don't let us know, we are obliged by the university rules to assume there's nothing wrong with you. Okay? So if there is something that issue, then let us know. Now sometimes the issue could be more personal. Um, no one is too bothered about parading a broken arm. Um, sometimes, in fact, you can sort of parade it like a, a trophy um, with your plaster and you, everyone can sign. But, if, but you might have relational issues, you might have family problems, um, and those are not things that you want to broadcast. Uh, so, still, you need to let us know in order for us to take things into account. Um, so, your personal tutor, then, may be the person you want to see about that, because it's a private issue. Okay? So, you don't do this in the group, you go and make an appointment with your personal tutor uh, and let them, or him or her know what is going on. But uh, Dr. Bockerman Evans is another person you can approach because she's the year tutor, she looks after year one. So it may be that your personal tutor is quite familiar with you and you don't actually want your personal tutor to know uh, because you don't want to... Um, interrupt that relationship, but you still want the official system to know. So you can uh, then approach Dr. Bockerman Evans. Um, on the other hand, if you don't want to do that, then there is still me. I'm head of the discipline. I can also see any of you at any time. Um, preferably not all at once and preferably not all the little issues, but I am there as a backup. Okay, so we, we, do, we are generally fairly open door about these things. Don't be too shy. Uh, it's best that you keep us informed. So the year tutor deals with a lot of those things, uh, processing of these uh, information, and where there is need and where there is a request, we will always keep things private and confidential. And occasionally... And we have had instances of these. Uh, there are issues where I am the only person in the university who will know about it. Okay. So there are times when uh, a student has provided me with information. I have checked the truthfulness of the information. I see it is serious. Uh, then we go through in the exam board. And my colleagues then have to take it on trust that I know what I am doing, and they will know the details. So, I'm not saying you will come to this, but it is useful for you to know now what to do when you do have things not going well. Okay? Are there any questions so far? Okay, fine. Um, we'll carry on. So, personal tutors are there, as I said, to get to know you a bit better so that, and to be a first port of call for you so that when you do have uh, issues, you can go to them. It will also be the place where you're likely to get most of your uh, bits of information if you are not getting it from fellow students. Um, I know it's quite easy to chat to each other uh, and get information off your friends, 
but sometimes that information may not be as reliable as from the official channel. Uh, so have a word with your personal tutor if you have queries. Um, we generally uh, can, can sort most things out in the school. Sometimes, we, if it's involving registration and records, we may have to actually get the university involved. But mostly, we can deal with uh, changes uh, in the school. But the personal tutor, then, is the first place you go to to get these things, uh, to, uh, to, to have your questions answered. Um, the personal tutor, no. the personal, forget that, oh, what's on screen, the personal tutor is not um, an academic tutor. That's not to say they can't deal with the academic issues. Um, you will have me quite a bit. Um, I do, I do the um, structures mechanics module, so you have me this semester, you have me next semester. And if you have me as your personal tutor, then again you see me even more. Um, so if there are issues when you come to me, then uh, and you want me to, go, as, a per, as one of my tutees, you want me to talk about structural mechanics, question 6b. Yeah, okay, we can do that. But that's not the point of the personal tutor. Uh, I don't mind, and I think most personal tutors don't mind uh, dealing with academic issues, but the personal tutor is largely there for pastoral issues. So it's for your well, look after your well-being to know how you're getting on. Academic issues largely reside with, uh, dealing with academic issues are the role of the module teachers. So if somebody sets you a question and you don't know how to do it, then that is the person to go and ask about that question. Okay? Um, but the personal tutor and the year tutor do have a function in monitoring your progress. Uh, we, in this school, we have a system of tests as well as exams. Um, so your modules, you have coursework, you have some which are examined, and then in the examined modules you have tests. So on your timetable, you might have noticed 9 o'clock Monday morning test. There isn't a test in the next 2-3 weeks, um, a Monday 9 o'clock, but there will be Monday 9 o'clock tests uh, before too long. Okay. So those tests will be marked, and the, and then the, they will be returned to you via your personal tutor, and that's a way of monitoring how you're getting on with the, your studies, or, or not, which is where yeah, we have problems that we need to resolve. If you're getting on fine, then we'll leave you to it, because you know where you are. But if, if your marks coming back are poor, then clearly you... And we need to make sure some work out what's going on and if anything could be done. Um, it might be worth you knowing that... Hang on. There's a, there must be a slide somewhere. Um, uh, might be worth you knowing um, the, the marking level. Uh, because you've all come from different parts of the world, um, and the university, Cardiff University and other universities have a standard marking level, marking scheme. Um, so it's, it's useful for you to know that 40% is the pass mark. 40% uh, means you pass, but doesn't mean it's great. It means you just scrape through, and that's 40%. Maximum is 100%. Now, we do mark to the whole of the mark range. It is possible to get zero marks. It is also possible to get 100. So, unlike some um, other places, you may hear rumours that all, all the marks are going to be between 55 and 65. That's not the case in engineering. If you, if you get the numerical answer correct, 
Well, that's 100%. You can't debate fuzziness around a numerical answer. If you get it wrong, well, okay, that's zero. You can't debate about... If a bridge collapses, it collapses. It is not 15% right. Okay? So, the, we're dealing with a fairly clear-cut um, situation here. So, we use the full mark range, but 40% is uh, the bare pass. So, 50% is sort of okay, 60% is good, 70% is very good. That's the, the, the way we mark. Okay. Um, so, as these marks come back, then um, we will look at your marks with you and make sure you are at least passing, but preferably doing more better than just pass. Okay, I see what the slides coming up are now. Uh, these are some of the locations in the um, Newport Road side. The blue arrows are uh, entrances to the building. So I think some of you would have used that entrance to get into the south building. The Newport Road entrance is the big wooden door, uh, ancient-looking uh, wooden door. Uh, it, that is entered via um, security card. Now, it may have not happened yet, but your student ID card, which is your library card, that card uh, has got a magnetic strip on it inside, uh, and it will, if you just wave it at the black, um, I don't know, what do you call it? It's a black little thing by the door. Okay? It's got flashing lights and... Uh, it flashes red at you, and then you wave at it, and it goes green, and you can enter. So, engineering students should have automatically access into the engineering building via that door. Uh, if you don't have that access this week, well, wait, because it may be that the computer hasn't loaded in your details yet. Um, but next week, come lectures time, if you're still not being uh, able to get in, then tell us, because you should be able to. Not all students have access that way, only engineering students have access that way. We actually want you to come on site to go to lectures. Okay. The, this slide shows you the various other things. Uh, the main one is this one where we're at, Prince Philip Lecture Theatre. Um, but... I think uh, your tutor, come Monday or sometime next week, may well take a, a tour around the place with you to let you become more familiar with the place. But the Trevithic building is where most of the central facilities are. So canteen, um, down the library at the back there, this, build, this room at the top here. Okay? Those are your key things. And the other key place is the ACE office which is the teaching office. So the ACE office is one floor above where we were at enrollment. And um, I'll show you a picture of it. So you'll recognize this corridor because you were queuing, bunching up around there earlier. And some of you went on the stairs and went downstairs to the lab. Yeah, you shouldn't have. Uh, but if you go on the stairs and go up, uh, one floor, then the ACE office is almost directly above the enrollment room. Um, so that corridor would look a bit like that. There is the entrance, and you'll then see the ACE office almost uh, well, immediately in front of you as you enter the room. Um, that there is, doesn't look up like that now. That's uh, that what you what we call the forum. The forum is well, it's a open work space. It's got tables, chairs. Uh, it's what you might call a common room, um, and it's open till about ten o'clock at night, I think. So it's um, a general space. It's not booked normally. It isn't booked for anything else. It is a place where you can chill out with your friends and that sort of thing. 
and hopefully um, not just chill, but actually talk about your work and study together. So that's uh, what we call the, the forum in there. And that's where, forum is where we'll have lunch as well, so you get to see it. Um, one of the big problems I find um, with students is actually communication. Um, it's getting you to understand and know some bits of information. There are various ways we'll do that. We will use your email. We will email you. Although I never trust email because um, you never read it. Um, but at least we, do use, we will use it. And we will send email to your Cardiff email address. And if you don't check your Cardiff email address regularly, but you use some other hotmail or whatever, then please set up a forwarding mechanism from your Cardiff um, server so that it set, redirects all your incoming mail to the email server that you do check. Okay. That's one thing we will do. We will use um, the plasma screens around the place as well for general information. The one thing we do do for emergency is we, we will send you a text if there are things that we need to know and they are going to impact you with less than 24 hours notice. Uh, that means it's actually vitally important that, that your SIMS record has your mobile number in the mobile field. So your mobile number should be something like 0, 7, and then a string of numbers. Preferably don't add the country code, don't put spaces in between, uh, just have a string of numbers because what we want to do is to pick up that number by computer and send the text directly. If it if it's not recognized as a standard number format, then you won't get the text. So there are times when we will send texts. If a lecture is uh, cancelled uh, and it's less than 24 hour notice, we will send a text. Um, if the university is shut, sometimes it has happened because of snow, uh, then we will send a text. Uh, if a lecture is, um, if, if, you, if we swap lectures so that you turn up at the place but somebody else is delivering a different lecture relevant to you because we've done a swap in the timetable while well, we won't bother us doing text there you, because we will work it, eventually you'll get the right lecture. Okay? So uh, these are the ways we will try and keep in touch. Um, we will have a student staff panel. So we will be looking for student reps from among you, which will help feed into the discussions and feedback on the general running of the degree programs. Right. I see I'm getting towards the point where I've saturated you with information. Um, because I think I've, I've had enough too. Um, but we've still got a few things to say. Let me say, tell you briefly how civil engineering pans out. I say civil engineering, I mean all three programs, because this is the structure of the ACE set of programs in year one, year two, year three, year four, and these are various threads, so you have the mass threads, design, structures, and so on. You are only interested in those two rows there because that's first year autumn, first year spring. That's what you're doing. So in year one, you are going to do 120 credits and that's 10 modules because two of those are double modules. Okay, the structural mechanics and the engineering analysis, which means math, those are double modules, so they run over the semesters um, there. But all the others are single, single modules. Um, 
and there is a lot of commonality across. It is really the architectural engineering students that do slightly different a half module in the second semester. So in the first semester, you are largely together. This is our class. Okay. Um, so you you have two semesters. Each semester consists of six modules. Um, two of those run across the semesters. Um, so you will have approximately uh, eight examine modules. So they have an exam at the end, and then the, you've got some continually assessed modules, which means coursework submission but no exams. These modules and ten credits are, by university reckoning, meant to occupy a hundred hours of your time for every ten credits. The contact time for that would only be about 30, 35, 36 hours. That, that sort of order. Okay? So the rest of that time is meant to be for, uh, for you uh, to do the work. The, you will find that one in, certainly in lectures is actually not the best place to be learning because it's uh, heavy going, it's highly um, intensive in the mind. So you might be writing notes, you, might, you, you can't be doing reflective thinking as well as writing notes uh, all the time. So there is a lot of work that you will need to be doing in all of these modules outside the lecture, the contact time. And the university um, gets us to arrange our modules such that e each 10 credit is equivalent to 100 hours of work. So you can roughly work out how much uh, you need, you should be doing. So the year will look like, the year structure will look like this. So we are in week zero at the moment. So next week is week one. There are 11 weeks. No, so forget reading week. There is no reading week. Not anymore. Um, week one is next week. And there are 11 weeks before uh, Christmas vacation. Uh, nice thing about Christmas vacation is you get three weeks of no lectures. Um, but... What you must be wary of is you come back, it's week 12, and then it's two weeks of exams. So there isn't actually much time, um, aside from uh, Christmas lunch itself, for you, be, for you to be doing too much relaxing. Uh, because Christmas vacation really is time where you need to be preparing for the autumn semester exams. After the autumn semester exams, immediately after those two weeks, you start week one spring. Okay, so the second semester runs immediately from uh, the end of the exam period. Um, and then, in, in the way the calendar works out this year, you, there are actually 11 weeks in the spring semester before your Easter vacation. Uh, the last week in there will be where we have the surveying field course. More details about that when we get there. Uh, it's quite a long time away yet. So, come to Easter vacation, three weeks again, but not really much of a vacation, because come back, you have the uh, revision week, week 12, and then you're into exams. So, the semester structure this year is like this. I say this year because Easter vacation moves around from time to time. Uh, so this year you are getting the 11 teaching weeks before Easter and then you have exams. Okay? So that's how the structure of the year works. I said there are 120 credits. In order to progress to year two, you must have all those credits. And to get those credits, you must pass the module. At least pass the module. 40% okay? is pass mark. That means you must get 40% in all the modules. And you must have all modules 
in order to progress to year two. We don't have a carry system. You can't be doing year two while you still have some of your year one modules to obtain. Okay. So, you, uh, so progression literally is moving on. And you can't move on until you have completed what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Right, let me uh, say a little bit about resets uh, or what happens when you don't have the full 120 credits. Um, so, some of these details you will find um, you might not remember. Don't worry, I said I am recording this, so it, you will be able to come back to it. So, pass mark is 40%. Now, there is something called condonement, which is what happens if you are nearly there but not quite. Okay? So, if you are nearly there, um, we can apply condomen to allow you to progress. But you have to be nearly there in no more than two modules or no more than 20 credits and your module mark must still be at least 35. So this is like a almost, got, almost passed completely but not quite. And if that's the case, then you are still able to progress. So you will have the fail mark or say 38, 36, or whatever, uh, in those modules, but you uh, allow the credits, so you progress. That's what we call condonement. If you don't end up um, progressing because of condonement, then you are probably in this zone, uh, where you have then to resit the paper. You are allowed up to 60 credits maximum, August reset. So, whatever is the module you failed in, then you have a reset in that module in that period. Believe me, August reset is no convenience. Uh, it interrupts everything. This is what you want to avoid. This is not getting through year one by installments. Um, if you are going to get through year one, do it first attempt. Don't do it via resets. Um, but resets are available up to 60 credits. And if you are failing more than 60 credits, then it will be repeating year one the following year. So it will be 14, 15. Now hopefully we're not talking about that very much because you won't be in that region. But that is what will happen um, if you don't pass year one. Um, something worth noting is that the university rules permit only three attempts per module uh, maximum and after that then you will be withdrawn from the program okay. Okay. let me Yeah, I've got a few minutes before my colleagues turn up. Let me say two, three things uh, fairly quickly. You have a timetable in your booklet which looks something like this. Uh, some, it can look somewhat confusing because there are sometimes requests, requirements for you to be in two places at the same time. Uh, don't worry, we're not asking for that. If you look more carefully... Uh, you will see that the timetable, some of it operates on week one, some of it operates on week two. So, for example, next week, Monday, I said to you there is no test, uh, but you should be seeing your tutor at 10 o'clock. Um, at 11 o'clock, EN 1049, it says me in this room. Actually, Professor Falconer will be doing fluids with you, but just turn up anyhow. He and I have done a swap. Okay, so you turn up for 11 o'clock, and then you see at the end of the day, it says um, uh, Suon, which is Student Union, Great Hall, um, but that's for week two onwards. So those two slots are not there in week one. So next week, Monday morning, you actually have a fairly easy start. Tuesday, however, uh, 9 o'clock, you're in here, 10 o'clock you're in here, 11 you're in here. Okay, so 
and then you've still got some uh, things going on the back end of the day. So that's how the timetable works. Some of these activities along here with um, CAD and computing, uh, sorry, CAD and drawing, um, those will be allocated in groups. So you will not necessarily, well, you will not be coming to all of these sessions every week. Where it says by group, a further timetable will come out, you'll be allocated into groups and you turn up according to when your group is supposed to be where. So this is the general timetable. Um, some of this will not apply to you. For example, English class may not apply to you. Languages, if you, unless you're in the year in Europe, then you're not doing languages. So you, in general, you, don't be, you won't be going to French at 5 o'clock on the Tuesday evening. Most of you will not anyway. Okay? So the, um, that's how the timetable works. You have an induction program which looks something like this. It's printed in your uh, booklet. That's for this week only. Okay, so you have the induction for this week. Um, I'll mention two things before I finish. Um, I mentioned briefly earlier about um, when you have situations which impaired you from uh, working fully, um, that those are what we call extenuating circumstances. So if you have issues that arise um, that are according to these definitions, i.e. they impact your performance in an assessment, a piece of coursework, or in an exam, and they are what you consider to be severe and exceptional, so that's your judgment. If you think that they, it's, it's been severe, then you should... Uh, and you think that those circumstances were unforeseen, i.e. they're not something that uh, you should have been able to, in the ordinary way, uh, found a, another a solution for. And those things happen close to the time of the assessment or exam. Then you have uh, what you consider as extenuating circumstances. You should let us know about it using this, this form. I think a copy of that is in your booklet to let you see what it looks like. Uh, it's downloadable from the uh, school website um, from Blackboard and it's also obtainable in hard copy from the teaching office. Yeah. So this is how you let us know where things have not gone well um, and they have impacted on your performance. Okay. I see some of my colleagues have turned up, but let me say one more thing before I finish. Um, and that is to show you uh, the examination paper cover and the instructions relating to it. So, towards the time of the exam, we will produce for you, for every exam that you have, the cover sheet. So you know exactly what the exam is like before you turn up. So the cover sheet will, we generally say you can, you can use a calculator and if a dictionary is relevant to you, you can bring that in so long as it's pre-stamped and checked that it doesn't contain lots of formulae as well, okay, that sort of thing. Um, but the exam cover sheet will tell you, um, it gives you instructions. Um, different papers have different instructions. Uh, some say answer all questions. Some will say answer three out of five. Some divide various things into bits, into sections, and say answer two out of three in section A and two out of three in section B. Now, uh, if you do not follow the instructions, so, for example, the question paper says, answer three out of five, but you attempt all five questions and you leave five answers in your booklet, then it is important to know that the university instructs us that we will mark the exam script in the order that we see it written, so from, from the beginning of the booklet, and we will only mark until 
the instruction is fulfilled. So, if you answer five questions when you're supposed to answer three, and you don't cross out two, so you're presenting five questions to be answered, and your first two may be your worst two answers, they will count. And we will stop marking after question three. Okay? So you must either obey the instructions, or if you don't, then cross out the answers you don't want marked. And that's the, the uh, shape of the uh, exam paper.